Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I want to talk about a protein that's released mostly by skeletal muscle cells into a lesser extent cardiac muscle cells, and that's a protein called myostatin. And if you have any familiarity with the bodybuilding and weightlifting community, you've probably heard this uh, protein's name thrown around. Here I want to discuss its function. And to do that, we're actually going to look at its signaling pathway, and then I'll show you some effects that are observed when you actually have a deficiency of this protein. Now, so what is myostatin's general function? Its function is negative regulation of muscle growth. Now, you will see some effects of myostatin on bone tissue and also, um, to some extent, cardiac muscle tissue. Um, but in general, it's going to be negative regulation on skeletal muscle growth. And what that means is it actually inhibits skeletal muscle growth. And this is something that's naturally produced by muscles. So that begs the question, if everyone wants to grow bigger muscles, and muscles are important for movement, they're important to prevent falls um, in elderly people, and just generally having a higher metabolism, metabolism, why would you want to inhibit muscle growth naturally? Well, it turns out that skeletal muscles in particular actually have a propensity to just keep growing, just keep getting bigger and bigger. In fact, what I challenge you to do right now is actually go look on the, take a Google image search, just type in something like myostatin humans, and you'll actually see that there's these kids who are jacked. They have abnormal muscle growth far beyond what you would expect for a kid their age. Um, and that's what happens if you have a deficiency of this protein. So it turns out that a myostatin actually has an important function in keeping muscles from just growing out of control. Okay? I mean, you're not going to get as big as the Hulk necessarily just by having a deficiency, but it sort of keeps muscle growth in check and allows uh, the body to only get growth whenever it's absolutely necessary, such as when you're doing heavy resistance training. All right, so if we want skeletal muscle growth, we have to have muscle protein synthesis. And so there's really, at least in the context of this signaling pathway, there's really three things that we need to have in order for effective muscle protein synthesis to occur. The first thing is we have to have this uh, protein called AKT phosphorylated. That's the first thing. The second thing is we need this protein called mTOR to be active, and in order to activate mTOR, it has to be phosphorylated as well. The other thing that has to happen is we have to have this FOXO transcription factor continue to remain in the cytoplasm, and the way we do that is through phosphorylation. Okay, so let's actually look at what happens when you have protein synthesis. So you have significant amount of mus muscle protein synthesis. Well, when you have significant amount of muscle protein synthesis, this protein PI3K is active. Okay, so when PI3K is active, it actually phosphorylates AKT, and you get the phosphorylated form of this protein, which leads to its activity. So that's what happens when you have um, significant amount of muscle protein synthesis. Now when AKT is phosphorylated, it does two things. One, it triggers the phosphorylation of FOXO, this transcription factor. It'll turn out later that if FOXO manages to go into the nucleus, it actually promotes more uh, gene expression that actually results in uh, destruction of proteins, which you wouldn't want if you're trying to get protein synthesis. So by phosphorylating FOXO, it remains in the cytoplasm and prevents it from going into the nucleus. So that's the first thing that AKT does when it's activated. Phosphorylates FOXO, prevents it from going into the nucleus and transcribing, or at least expressing, um, anti muscle protein synthesis genes. Okay? The other thing that AKT does when it's activated, which is probably the more important thing for muscle protein synthesis, is it triggers the activation of mTOR. So in addition to phosphorylating FOXO, It'll phosphorylate mTOR, which of course activates mTOR. Now, I won't go into all these things right here, but it suffices to say that mTOR is the master regulator of muscle protein synthesis, or just protein synthesis in general. So if you activate mTOR, you're going to get protein synthesis. Okay, So that's the case of what we see when we want muscle protein synthesis. So this PI3K is active. It phosphorylates AKT, making it active, and then activated AKT phosphorylates FOXO, causing it to remain in the cytoplasm, and then activated AKT phosphorylates mTOR, activating mTOR, leading to muscle protein synthesis. Now, for myostatin. 
Myostatin negatively regulates this process, so it actually inhibits muscle growth. So because all of this process right here begins with this act of PI3K, it would make sense if somehow myostatin was to inhibit PI3K. And that's actually what it does, but it does so through a, a signal transduction pathway. So myostatin is a, is a protein. You can see its ribbon diagram right here. Um, so myostatin being a protein can't cross the cell membrane. So it has to activate the inside of the cell through a signal transduction mechanism. So myostatin's out here. Um, it'll actually bind to a myostatin receptor. Um, that's what this conglomerate of proteins are right here. This is the myostatin receptor. And when myostatin binds, the receptor will activate a protein called SMAD2 and 3. This is an intracellular uh, second messenger system. So SMAD2-3 will become phosphorylated via the action of this receptor. And then you have phosphorylated SMAD2-3. When SMAD2 and 3 get phosphorylated, they inhibit PI3K. So remember what I said, when PI3K is active, AKT is active, mTOR is active, and FOXO remains in the cytoplasm. So if you inhibit PI3K, that's what myostatin does indirectly, if you inhibit PI3K, then this process of activating AKT never happens. Okay. So if AKT is not active, then FOXO is never phosphorylated, so let's see what happens there. FOXO is not phosphorylated, so this FOXO transcription factor is free to go into the nucleus, where it's going to act as a transcription factor and lead to the expression of a couple uh, very important anti-protein synthesis genes. Um, those are MURF1 and then Atrogen1. And you can see these genes will lead to processes like increased protein ubiquitination, which leads to increased proteolysis. That just means degradation of proteins. Okay? So FOXO is a transcription factor that's important in actually degrading proteins. So if, you're in, if you want muscle growth, you don't want a lot of FOXO activated. In fact, following a bout of resistance exercise, FOXO will actually become inhibited because you'll have activation of PI3K. But if you have myostatin present here, PI3K is inhibited, FOXO is not phosphorylated, and then it goes into the nucleus. The other thing that happens when you're inhibiting PI3K via myostatin is, again, AKT cannot be activated, so therefore mTOR cannot be activated. And if mTOR cannot be activated, then you can't have muscle protein synthesis. So the way myostatin functions in the end is really twofold. One, it inhibits muscle protein synthesis, but number two, it activates protein degradation. So it does both of those two things, which together actually prevent muscles from actually just getting out of hand in terms of their growth. Okay. So here's some individuals that are myostatin knockouts, meaning that um, they don't have a functional copy of the myostatin gene on either chromosome. So they would be MSTN minus minus. They would be homozygous recessive individuals. Um, you can still see similar effects to these if they are heterozygous, meaning they have one good allele and one bad allele, so plus minus. You can still see some effects because this follows an incomplete dominance pattern. But in general, if you don't have the myostatin protein, uh, you can't inhibit this process of muscle protein synthesis and you can't trigger enough protein ubiquitination and proteolysis. And so what happens is you get out of control muscle growth. So it's very pronounced here in this dog right here. This is actually a real dog who has practically double the amount of muscle mass that a normal dog would have. You can see the extreme abnormal definition of the muscles in this dog. I don't think I need to convince you of that, but this guy's actually a myostatin complete knockout, homozygous recessive. Um, this was actually a meme that was going around, went viral. This is actually the buff cat meme. Um, some guy actually saw this buff cat just walking around and they nicknamed it buff cat. You can just type in buff cat in Google and find stuff like this. But this cat clearly has a lot of muscle mass um, and that's because I believe he has a myostatin deficiency. Okay? We have a cat that looks just like this. His name's Buddy, except he's just kind of fat. So, But this guy's fortunate in the sense that he's got a lot of muscle. But that's an actually an abnormal thing that occurs when you don't have the myostatin protein expressed or you don't have a functional copy of the myostatin receptor.
Now, one, one of the thoughts that's going into some kinds of research is uh, to prevent muscle loss as people age, can we do something to inhibit myostatin? And you can read about this. I won't go into a whole lot of detail here, but one of the possible or potential therapies in elderly individuals who are um, who lose muscle mass naturally as they age to keep that muscle mass so they don't get as high of a risk for a fall is to inhibit myostatin. And there's some things out there that are known to do that. For example, fortitropin. Fortitropin is a natural inhibitor of myostatin. And they're also looking at a bunch of other drugs and medications that could potentially inhibit myostatin or the receptor. And so theoretically, if those were to function, then you could slow down the muscle loss that we see as people age, and because falls are one of the biggest risks to elderly people, and they're actually uh, contributed by lack of muscle mass and atrophy, this could help alleviate a lot of those problems and help people live higher quality of life. So this actually has a lot of applications in it, okay? And of course, there are people in the weightlifting and bodybuilding community that actually would like to just inhibit this protein to accelerate their muscle mass. I guess you could consider that an alternative to human growth hormone or anabolic steroids, um, but that's most likely not safe because because myostatin also has functions in bone and the heart. And I don't, I don't know about you, but I would not want to mess with the heart too much. All right. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of myostatin. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.